Hello YouTube, Steve Trucker here. Just a quick update before I can stand outside for a bit, but I'm, I'm not actually on the M4 yet, I'm on the slip road. But I'll stand on the hard shoulder in a second. We have broken down. We went to pull off the, from the lights at the bottom of Junction 4, going up the slip road onto the M4, which we just fueled up. And just basically the truck just all died. It just, just went like limpo mode. All the warnings that you can name came up on the dash. <laughs> Merged to get onto the hard shoulder and just, yeah, not a good day. So, we phoned up the assistance cover. Virgo come out around after 12, over an hour from now. So, hashtag hard shoulder life. And I've just put up a message on my Facebook as well about it. So by the time you've seen this, it's probably been a week since this has happened. So you'll probably have more update to what's happened from now. You know, hopefully by the sounds of it, it could be the sensor from a taco. So it might be a reasonable fix, but it could be anything. Because it just suddenly just went from pulling off good power to like like that. Like it wasn't even a noise really. It's just that you could feel it. it just suddenly just all died on me. It was just like, yeah, what, what's happening? <laughs> yeah. So fun and games. Any breakdown hazards are not on our shoulder. I'm on slick road, so it's not as quite as dangerous as if I was on the motorway. But still, we got to keep your wits about you. I phoned up the company straight away. Then I got out, have a good look around the wagon, see if there's anything obvious that I can see. You know, if a pop shaft has come off, or you know, I don't think I blew a tyre, but you know, you check your tyre, check everything, see if there's anything obvious, any smoke or whatever. Which is none. There's not nothing blatant gone wrong. So it must be obviously within the engine or sensor or. Who knows? It just be a computer fault. It could be. So, fun and games. It's a waiting game now. Literally is a waiting game. Nothing I can do. I can't go anywhere. Got a holiday in off to my left. But, I mean, the Scania assistance has been awesome. The lady I spoke to been awesome. You know, very helpful. You know, no issue, the company's been all good, no issues. So it's all a good feeling when you have to phone up, even though it's not your fault, <laughs> about a breakdown, you're like... Because <sighs> like anybody, as a driver, I just want to make progress. I want to just get on to the customer, get to it, no issues, have a nice day. But as, I, as the boss said, you can't forecast these things. It happens every so often. This is the first breakdown proper breakdown I've had for about over a year now. Last time it was in another Scania, but actually twice it was, it was my last one. I think it might have been the batteries that died on me when I started up in the morning. That's just primarily, and that was after a, a second one like a few weeks before from the similar sort of issue. And they just did test the batteries the first time, so they they said the batteries must be fine. It started up, and then second time I was like, you need some new batteries. So that's what I done. End up with some new batteries sorted. So if it's nothing too major, but we we can't move, we can't start her up. We got on a hard shoulder and she just cut out. Just like, not literally like that, but just the engine just went. Just cut off, so I thought I'd try and restart her and nothing. Got nothing from her, just turn the ignition. Everything lights up, the fuel gauges don't go up or anything like that. It's just like. It's, it's like the computer saying, nope, I'm not turn, even going to try and turn the engine over. So I reckon it is a sensor or something's happened within out of sight. <laughs> But said, these things are sensor testers. It's all about being a truck driver. A lot of it's all about communication. So as soon as it happens, phone the office, let them know so they're not sat there going, 
why is he on the hard shoulder? Why, you know, why, why is he still there? You know, why is he stopped there? Well, you know, and get the ball rolling as soon as you can for recovery or, you know, mechanical assistance. So what I might do is prep my cab now, ready for the mechanic to lock up. Yay. You know, but it happens. There is, I say, yay, because I keep a clean cab. And then the mechanic's going to be there. to climb in from that side and, you know, never know, might come up here and have a quick look and see that we have a live active lane there. Not worth it. Safety foremost hints to I'm wearing a high vis so I have to quickly hop out on vis I'm going to throw my coat on in a second because it is raining as I said I'll go and wait on the hard shoulder but I thought I'd give a quick video about it within the cab so I'm not getting soaked about what's happening hopefully you've enjoyed this so far well not enjoyed it I'm not really enjoying me on the hard shoulder but as I say it is what it is Sorry there's nothing really I can show you, I might put a picture of what the dash has, you probably see it on my Facebook anyway. And if there's any further information that I have to upload, or not have to, but I can give you, I will do. So I'll catch you a bit later, or give you, or we'll touch on an update after this, but if I don't, thank you very much for watching. Please like if you like, sub, you know, etc, etc. Over and out. Steve Trucker here. Yeah, I've been in Scania for 24 hours, if not longer, but doing really good here at uh, Scania at Heathrow. After 80 yards, turn right. You know, they've been awesome. 
So I had to spend the night in the driver's room. But it is what it is. Now it ended up that my main ECU had died a death. I'm lucky we're covered by warranty still, so we're all good. It's all fixed, it's all sorted. Turn right. And they're very kind allow me to have a courtesy car last night to go out, do a bit of sh not shopping, but to go and get a meal and that, which is nice of them. I'm sorry if I'm not focused on the end, so say, yeah, junction waiting to pull out. That's kind of them to let us out. It's a bit surprised with London. Done my vehicle check, hooked up back up to my trailer, you know, all good. They even had checked out After a few other little things with yards, us as well. Go left on the roundabout, second exit. But those will get rectified hopefully when we go back to Swinton because it's in for MOT this month. Go left on the roundabout, second exit. Second exit, we don't turn into first. Rate restricted anyway, that's a nice truck, but you probably can't see, even as a DAF. Nicely decorated, I should turn them off on one. I'll do that a bit later, I thought I'd do just a bit of a one on one video. I should have taken the picture After of 80 yards, go left on the roundabout. Road. First exit. Literally, as said, right outside Heathrow on the freight terminal side of it. We're going to be going past it any second. Well, we are right next door to it at the moment. First exit. No, I could hear last night's aircraft taking off, landing. It wasn't too bad to be honest, actually. You know, I thought it was going to be a lot worse. Because I could see a 747 just within our eyesight, all parked up, and all the aircraft in the background. And we got the tower off to my right, so I can't show you it. I thought I'd just say what I can see. And you got all the freight terminals here. Now, I do like my aircraft. I went for a nice walk down as well yesterday afternoon, down to the town bit, which was all right. You know, a bit of exercise in a way. You know, do something. I say, I already polished my truck when I was getting loaded, so I had nothing else to do with the truck. I didn't want to start cleaning the inside because of uh, the ming in and out of it. But yeah, again, I want to say a massive thank you to uh, Scania at Heathrow. I know I've said it already, but seriously, thank you very much. You know, it's been a, well, not a pleasure in terms of expected pleasure, but you know, it's made a bad situation better. You know, would have been better for concepting the cab last night, but it is what it is. That's a policy. I understand why, why not? No, but it is what it is. Only one night. Managed to have a shower as well, so all good. So, hot van walked up, there's three coffees in there as well, so I can't really complain about the brew fund, even though they're not the best. We've got a cyclist, we've got a cyclist. So it was main ECU or the link ECU that had failed. So basically it locked them out from getting even onto the computer. So it was, you know, pretty bad. And I had to get recovered by, I forgot, it's like BN recovery or something. I've got a photo of it. I'll try and remember to post it up now. And you may have seen the picture on Facebook. I may have put out. And it's my fun cover to the quick video I done yesterday. So by the time I had to scan you, it was around 2.30, 2 o'clock yesterday afternoon and bear in mind I broke down around, what, 10.30ish? Uh, uh, this load was meant to be at, at the customer for around midday on, on the After Skidder, 400 had. yards, cross the roundabout, first exit. Ironically enough though, we are on the same ETA more or maybe a bit earlier than we were on yesterday. So it's as if we loaded today 
will be at Augusta. <laughs> but it is what it is. No, no, it's my doing. It's just cross the stuff roundabout. Happens. First exit. It's a good uh, chat with some of the drivers in there as well, chat about trucks and all that. You know, my not so After much luck with this yards, truck so cross far. The roundabout. Second exit. Barnessing, I've got more, more of the uh, gremlins of the or gremlins of the fleet. <laughs> cross the roundabout. Second exit. But it is what it is. You know, you don't know that you got a gremlin till it starts being a gremlin or problem child. <laughs> In other words, so yeah. So that's all I've done. I saw that was pretty boring. I watched a few bit of YouTube and stuff like that. Caught up with some of the other. YouTubers who do trucking, you know, commented on a few things, and you know, and things all good. The channel's looking good as well. I am, I am amazed with the progress I'm making with it at the moment. And you know, it only shows when you put some effort into something what it can do. So, duh, 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 duh. you know, as, as I said, you know, I'm very impressed with Scania. I am also very impressed how the channel's going. You know, I was checking out the statistics, it's looking positive. Could be better, but you know, it's a lot better than it used to be. You know, I'm doing a massive turnaround on the channel, and it's to where I would expect Go it to right be. Go right on the roundabout, fourth exit. I think we're in this one before this other truck he seems to be very hyper familiar with this road system. The boys are option. And uh, you know, my plan on tidying up the channel is seamlessly working. It, you know, there's still a lot to do. There's still bits and bobs I want. I'm aiming to try and do which might be implemented next weekend or within the next few weeks dependent on tempo take the exit then take the motorway it's time to cruise that blue truck that overtook us I've got I didn't see which company it was um, he's definitely not hanging around he just overtook that a white truck that's ahead of us, just within that small amount of distance. He is definitely in a rush. I'm not saying I'm not in a rush to get so I'm not going to waste people. I think we have to stay on that door here. Yeah. We want to go left once again before, so heading up to devices now. Sorry, I'm not vlogging on the front camera. I'll, I'll keep this fairly brief, brief, even though you are following me a little bit for a drive at the moment. Because at the end, I'll chat a little bit more about the channel. Because as I said in the prior video about the channel, that you know, everything seems to be turning around better. I mean, the main issue I have seen looking looking at the playlist though is there's two playlists that are more or less the same thing in a way. Just umming and ahhing if I should just merge those two into one playlist. And maybe it's called something completely new or one of the one or the other. After 800 yards, take the exit, then keep left. But the only issue with that is that some of the videos are named after the playlists. 
on the other one, but I don't think it'll be a major issue. Take the exit. It'll just Beep. make... Keep left. The reason I want to alter it, it'll just make, make it a bit more understandable. I think a bit more... Yep, that's chatting, that's just vlogging, that's, you know, that, that's that. So I'm happy with Ahead. the, the uh, truck stop and services one. I realised I had two previous. Then, the take the motorway. It's time now. to cruise. Yes, I know it's time to cruise. <laughs> Yeah, so all good. And I mean, there's stuff like that. There's other videos I want to produce as well. With the gimbal is also going to aid me with some of these videos as well, in terms of keeping, even though stabilization on both cameras are awesome, having my GoPro on this, on the gimbal will just make things a lot more smoother and also there's the possibility of doing time lapses with it as well all sorts of stuff and I have the drone with me every week there's a truck who's probably broken down or had an accident or something So it's been just a long tray for hours, just a long tray for hours. It was just almost like I didn't know what to do with myself, to be on the side. I wasn't expecting this. <laughs> but hey, you can't do anything about it. There's not much that could have been done. The boss was quite good to check if I was happy while I was staying and all that. Yeah, there was a place for me to stay there. I know what the score was on that front. So they're normally quite good to look after you if, uh, if not. You know, and there was some facilities and that, so you know, I can't really complain. It is what it is. I've got some of these scanning key rings. I was debating things because I have a wash kit thing that I'll be able myself. I've had to browse through the accessory catalogue, <laughs> drawing over some of the stuff I could do with the truck. Sorry, the sun shade just opened up then for whatever reason. That's one thing I was discussing with uh, the driver, I forgot which company is with, I do, do apologise, does a lot of doing the logs and such like, forestry stuff, which sounds cool because he's got a new next gen, I was able to do it, so it's awesome 500. We were discussing about aircon systems for night, especially with the summers getting so much more hotter. But with the next gen, they didn't have it up there, they can put it underneath your bunk. You've got a new system. Hey, that, that is an option, because I don't really use my sun, sun thing. I know I'm after some light, but that's a practical thing that will improve my comfort within the cab. Along with what I was looking at the magazine, they even have a TV mount that I can stick up there, which is pretty cool. be an idea. But we'll see, there's a lot, you know, I'm planning to do, this, well, not a lot, but, you know, the stuff I'm planning to do in the truck and stuff like 50-50. The aircon unit, you know, I'd want to get one that's not a water-based one, so it's just a charged up one. Because I'd have to be faffing about having to service it. I'm not saying you could you don't have to maintain the ones that don't have the water, you do, but it's just less faff as a whole. When you're out the road all week it can help, especially on the hot days. You know, the nights I were last year 
Pips going to get caught off to the end. And it's a second backup if the aircon system fails, which you know you've got. And the aircon system that you can use. And it's just a part of the cab that is utilised at the moment. Same with, I might get a set of cabinets instead of the top bunk. Might be a plausible option. That's the chap there because he's had a few fits over the years. The average seems to be around three, four hundred pounds, I reckon, which to me seems a reasonable amount. But I'll, as I said in prior videos, I only will do that if if the company's going to keep the truck for you know a few more years. You know, because I know I'll probably lose out on the the cabinet, and that would have to stay with the truck potentially. Then I think what I'm going to do with the top bunk because you know, let's say the store is at work, I, I could keep it in the garage at home if they're all cool with that, but we'll see. Nothing definite yet, it's not quite our warranty yet, it's actually the end of this month because it's the first today. In other words, Scandi, when is it actually out of warranty? And they said, no, it's at the end of this month. Which is all cool. Would be good if, say, if you had a warranty claim on the last week or so, it's totally something like that, you get an extension by a month, would be pretty cool as well. But I know it's money at the end of the day. So if you've got a problem child like this one, you do not know where it's going to stop. and uh, Scania would want to keep forking out for it. These things can happen, it's part of transport, it's just, you just have to grin and bear it a lot of the time. You don't get to pick it most of the time. Well, you don't get to pick a break now, but you know. <laughs> it's not like you get an option. So if you like what you like, please like, please subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, if you like what you see, you know, also hit that bell icon as well if you want to be updated for when I update or when I post anything, which I do try and I mean want to increase the amount I post as well. Like I used my mobile phone yesterday to give you I've broken down, you know, <laughs> sort of video to say that. We'll see, we'll, they get there. I aim to release, as I said, a video every week. This is my main objective. And more. The only reason I aim to only aim for one is just to say, look, you know, if I'm busy, that's all what I might maybe be able to do. Yeah, I woke up being quite clanked up for some reasons. I'd never have caught something while I was there. Who knows? You can't caught a cold or 
some variant of it. But it is what it is, so if I'm, I'm turning a bit, uh, that's why as well. Yeah, so thank you very much for watching, and uh, I would say again to everybody who has subscribed, you know, thank you very much. You know, it is very much seriously appreciated. Let's get past these slow vehicles, apparently going from like 35 into 50. So, thank you yet again for watching, it is very much appreciated, you know, even if you don't subscribe, you know, thank you very much for looking at my channel and, you know, it is appreciated and, you know, if you do like what you see, you know, as I keep hammering, hit that at sub button, hit the sub button, I've also edited on, put in on every video that there's a sub button on the video as well, or should be a very small icon, so, it should interfere in the video. That was my main concern with it. I didn't want anything to interfere, interfere with the video. But I wanted just to increase the options of adding in uh, end sequences, as you may have been seeing, with links off, you know, subbing options. You know, on and on and on. And just no, just try and make the channel more professional, as I've been saying, just a bit more smoothed out and thought about. So, yet again, thank you very much for watching. I will catch you next time. Over.